Hey y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. Over here we have day four. If you missed that, it will be in the top corner. And today we are going to be kicking it off with the first watercolor in this entire set. Now, I don't know whether or not I'm going to go in to the background with the Liquitex ink or the watercolor for the black. So we're just gonna play that by ear. This is the concept I had. I, I very much wanted to do kind of like building blocks because, you know, today's prompt is build. I didn't know at first whether or not I wanted to have some perspective to the piece, but I'm pretty sure we're going to go with the one that has the less perspective just so I can fit in more blocks. Now, I'm going to be using my rulers and my circle form tool a lot in this piece, and y'all will probably realize, oh hey, She's not stopping to talk and not actually writing anything on the paper at the same time. I'm going to have to pre-record a couple of these pieces because unfortunately I will not have the time during the weekends to be able to film. I have my D&D evenings along with Saturdays and Sundays. I also work the most, so I'll be pre-recording most Saturdays and Sundays and I think that's going to help make the videos not you know, 27 minutes long, because I feel a little bad making y'all sit through that. But anyway, on to the story of this piece. So when I was thinking about the prompt build, I knew for sure I wanted to have it kind of be like those I spy books where there's a big scene ahead of you and there isn't necessarily a person involved. And that's why the main focus is these witch characters with blocks. However, a person eventually did get involved and we'll get to that part later. But I wanted to fit in as much small details as I possibly could in the making of this piece. And I figured that it would be really cute for the main characters of this scene to be these little witch doll figures. And I'm actually considering making some like out of clay so I can put them on my desk. I just found them really cute and I'm going to have to draw them a lot more in the future. But where the whole build prompt really comes into play, the witch at the very top is asking a person who just happened by to help them fix part of where the roof is improperly placed. So I, I thought that it would be really cute to have the reference of scale of how small these little witch creatures really are. I know I asked yesterday whether or not you guys liked the live audio versus the post-recorded audio. I'm very curious to see whether what your guys' opinion is now that you've actually had one of these Inktober videos in this style. At least the post-recorded audio style. It definitely makes the videos a good amount shorter, but um, the level of audio is going to be a lot louder than I usually can manage in the live recordings. But then again, I could have my... I will have to try plugging in my microphone and recording on my computer, the audio, while also filming next time. I'm gonna have a good few with post-recorded audio. I, I just needed to get a little bit of a break. I think I'm gonna do it in like sections. So we're gonna do... We did days one through four in the live audio recordings. And then starting from here until day nine, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do post recordings. And that's entirely because since I'm doing the Q&A episode on day 10, I really want to do the Q&A live so that way it can be like my most honest answers. And also I wanna challenge myself to actually think about the answers while doing the, uh, while doing the piece. I've got to say my favorite small detail about this entire piece is the snake with the with the bones all along its back. I don't know why it's just such a striking design to me, I just really enjoy it. I kind of wish I would have put a familiar next to every single witch doll, because the one in the archway has the snake, the one on the broomstick has the cat, and then we have the one at the top that doesn't have one. I guess you could assume that the mouse hiding in the bookshelf 
is that which is familiar. However, I would also imagine witches to just kind of be hiding away in, or wow, I would also imagine that rats would be hiding away in, um, in the homes of witches from time to time anyway. I think the one part that I I need to, well, if I had a second chance to do this piece, the one part that I think I would have redone is the potions and herbs storage. I just think it looks a little messy and I think I could have redone that to be a little better, but then again, I was kind of rushing to get this one done, I will be honest. I really wanted to move quickly through this line art. I figured it would be a lot quicker since most of the piece was taken up by these big geometric shapes, but my pens kept refusing to actually lay down the ink as I was going along the, the, the side of the ruler. And also I kept messing up on the side of the, um, the person in the background's face. Something I also realized kind of like halfway through, I could have done this piece in two parts. I could have made a cutout of the blocks and the witch dolls in the front, and then had a second piece of paper that I did the background on. Because as it stands right now, the girl in the background, her proportioning is a little funky. One of her shoulders isn't where it should be. I put the shading for um, the side of her torso in completely the wrong place, and you'll see that later, and it still bugs me whenever I look at this piece. I also went way too thick on the girl's eyeliner. I kept messing up with one type of pen that I'd go in with a different type of pen. I accidentally grabbed too big of a nib size, so I just had to make her eyeliner thicker and thicker. You know, just how it, it tends to be when you're doing eyeliner. I wish I would have also put like a little block chimney on top of where the cauldron smoke is coming out. I didn't think about putting cauldron smoke until after, I, after I'd already lined her hair. So that, that definitely was a misstep on my part. up close and personal on the uh, potions, this this really is my least favorite part of this piece. I just don't think the, the foliage or herbs or whatever they happen to be look very neat, and I tried fitting as many bottles in without overlapping them. The weird shaped potion bottle and the little drumstick of meat look like almost exactly the same thing to me. Anyhow, let's get into the watercolor. I think this is the first Ecoline watercolor that I ever bought, and it is possibly my favorite color in my entire Ecoline set. Now, I, I can't, for the life of me, pick a favorite color in, in actuality. I'd probably put this in like tied for first place with like a nice Prussian blue and black, though black technically isn't a color, it's, it's more of a hue. Is it a hue? I don't know, I, I'm not trained in colors. This watercolor takes a good bit of layering to get to that really nice deep red that I love. It's really easy to build it up to that color. Now, before anybody says it, yes, this is a watercolor. Though it is not traditional to Inktober, I decided to put watercolors in my Inktober lineup. And this is entirely because I used to grab for watercolors, well, 
specifically these watercolors a lot. I started my channel mainly focused on watercolor pieces. That's just because I felt I was doing too many Copic pieces beforehand and I wanted to give them a break and I had just gotten all of my watercolors and was enamored with them. But more recently, I just have hated how they look. I have such a hard time getting good texture with them. Like I tried doing a stippling pattern. I tried doing a gradient on the piece of meat and it just didn't really work out that well. So I just kind of went back and forth on it. And I actually spent like a good 15 minutes on that little chunk of meat. I cut out a good bit of it because it was just me going back and forth and painting it, deciding I hated it, mopping it up, painting it again, deciding I hated it again, mopping it up, and, and yada 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 yada. So I have this big problem where I hate the texture that watercolors give you. So I just haven't been reaching for them. The thing is, I'm also an art supply hoarder. I have a whole bunch of watercolors just sitting there, not doing anything, and I just need to get myself to use them. And that's why they have made their way into my Inktober prompts, just so I can make myself use them and practice using them. Number one area I need to get practice in is mixing them and, or well, learning how to dilute them properly and getting the colors I want. I tried doing a light toned blush across her cheeks, but honestly, it looks like she got horribly sunburnt just specifically on her cheeks. That could have been solved by me taking a color and putting it across her whole face and being able to use that to dilute out the, uh, the edges of her face. But I just didn't want her to be all pink toned. I wanted her to have some white tone still in her design because one thing i also feel like i'm not very good at in these prompts is leaving white spaces wow this really is just going to be a video of me talking about my faults i promised you guys i actually i absolutely love the end point of this piece and this one i think i finally left just the right amount of white spaces in it i, I do go in with watercolor and ink on all of the blocks. Probably should have left some of them white, but in the moment I felt like it didn't feel complete leaving them as white toned. I love watching ink dry in high speed images. I, I don't know what it is. It's just so satisfying to see the, the color tone change. Now for the witch's clothes, I mixed the red watercolor with the black watercolor to get this kind of purpley tone. And here we have the point where I don't think the single pop of color is going to remain the single pop of color. I think I'm just going to kind of use them however I need. I also noticed that half of my brushes had this stupid single hair sticking out of the end of them. I don't know whether or not that's because I improperly took care of them or I just happened to buy really cheap brushes, but this happens in the ones, the really cheap pack that I bought from Amazon when I first started my channel, the, the ones that I actually bought not for art, but for face painting about a year and a half ago, and now I've kind of not done face painting so in a while, so now I've accumulated them into my art set. I'm gonna have to go through before the next piece and kind of like do some maintenance on all of my brushes because there's a good few points where I actually got outside of the lines because there was this little nib of hair hanging outside of my brush and I really didn't notice it until it was too late. Now, 
I can't really tell whether or not having so much of the purplish tone was a good idea. I feel like it makes this piece look a little bit more chaotic than I probably would have liked initially. I liked using the purplish tone on the witch dolls because it gave them a little bit more to stand out from the background with. However, I'm questioning whether or not that was really the using that color was really the right choice for some of the blocks. I probably should have just used gray tones so that way it was kind of like the girl in the background has the full red tone, the witches have the purplish red tone, and the bricks all have a gray tone. I've been getting more into specifically styling pieces like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me work on this piece, and I hope you guys are ready for tomorrow. If you feel so inclined, hit that subscribe button and check me out on my other social media handles. Thanks, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.